Hey everyone, it's Lynn from Holistic Health and Wellness, of course. Just wants to hop in here, haven't been in for a while. Uh, we've had some sickness in our family with my husband, so I have not been around as much. However, I just want to jump in here. We're getting ready to get into the summer. And as you know, summertime brings thunderstorms. It brings bad weather in and out. And I know we've talked about it before, how um, weather changes can most definitely be a trigger for migraines for people. So I just want to remind you on a few things that you can do to help when you've got weather related migraines. For some of us, um, that is now pretty much my only trigger. So I so totally empathize with people that have that issue because it's also one of the harder ones to deal with. Um, however, there is an app called My Migraine Buddy that I know several people use because it does let you in on when the barometric pressure is going to change, whether it's high, whether it's low. And as you get on an app like that and learn a little bit more about what kind of barometric pressure changes or weather changes affect you and your migraines, then that's really helpful for you. So it's always important as well um, with any type of migraine and with any type of lifestyle to think about four key things. Sleep, so you need to make sure that you have enough sleep and when when the barometric pressure changes, a lot of this is like preventative for us that we have to think about. So make sure you get enough sleep. Make sure that you're drinking enough water because as I've said many times before, um, dehydration is a huge factor that's involved with migraines and I learned that from experience. Um, I had never even thought about hydration in terms of migraines and I was seeing somebody that was a holistic uh, medicine type person who had um, asked me about my water intake and she was the first one that ever told me that hydration has so much to do with how we feel with our migraines. So really important, those two things. Um, you should always be drinking enough water, you should always be getting enough sleep. So interestingly enough, there was something on the TV this week about a new study that had been done on sleep don't know as I fully believe this yet um, because I, I still believe that a good seven hours sleep, seven to eight hours sleep per night is what we should strive for. But this research was saying that they had found that people that get five hours of sleep a night and then they sleep maybe seven hours on the weekend, it makes up for the deficit in the week. Well, that may be so for an average person, but I think as migraine sufferers, we can't really take that chance. We need to make sure that we have um, good quality sleep every day of the week. So, you know, if you keep the same time of going to bed at night, the same time waking up in the morning, that's healthier for us. And naps really are kind of one of those things you really have to think about because if you nap too long, it can cause a headache. If you take a long nap, then it disrupts your sleep patterns and you don't sleep as well at night. So those are two things. Number three um, is your diet. If you think about what you eat, don't ever skip your meals. It's most important for us, especially as we're getting into this time of year where it's more prevalent for us to have weather-related migraines. You should always be eating three meals a day, snacking if you need that, but you should not skip meals. And the less processed foods that you eat, the better. So it's always best if you know what your food triggers are. When you know your food triggers, of course, you can avoid those foods to avoid migraines. And the last thing that I always do if I know that there's a barometric pressure change coming or some kind of weather pattern is, as you know if you've listened to me for any length of time, I do take magnesium as a supplement. Um, it has been proven through research to be very helpful for migraine sufferers. I take um, magnesium aspartate. Some people take a chelated form of, of it. There are several different forms of, of magnesium. Uh, but I always take an extra magnesium the night before if I know there's going to be a, a pressure change coming because that seems to be a good way of preventing it. So really when it comes to weather related migraines it's really hard once you've got them to do anything about them. So your best way to approach them is to 
be preventative in what you do. So to do that, as I've just mentioned, remember to eat well and don't skip meals, sleep well and try to get a, an average of seven to eight hours of sleep a night. To make sure that you're hydrated, um, and that means at the very least you should be drinking eight eight ounce glasses of water a day, whereas in the medical field now what they recommend is half of your body weight every day. <clears throat> and of course we've got bad weather here today so it's affecting my voice. And then lastly, if you take magnesium, just take an extra one the night before. Magnesium does help you to sleep better as well, so that's something to take, can take into consideration. So, as you know, I used to have migraines almost every day of the month, and now the barometric pressure is pretty much the only migraine trigger that I have. So, um, this time of year could tend to be a few more for me than maybe in the winter months. Uh, but I, I definitely know that these preventative measure, measures make a huge difference. So jump on the wagon with me and do some of these things and let me know in the group here how you are affected by migraines and whether you find that barometric pressure has an effect on you or not. So again, this is Lynn from Holistic Health and Wellness. I hope that you have a great rest of your Wednesday and I will talk to you later. Bye.